Welcome. My name is William J. Rothwell. You can call me Bill. And I'm delighted today to be talking to you about the subject of one of my newest books. And that book is Accelerated Action Learning. Now, action learning is a term that has frequently been used and it is one with more than one correct way of understanding. It was first invented in uh, the UK by Reg Revens, and he discovered in working with chief executive officers that they resisted efforts to uh, read material or listen to lectures. Instead, they were much more engaged when they encountered real world business problems and they could serve as consultants to each other in solving those problems. Well, flash forward to today. One way of understanding action learning is that it involves assembling a team of workers to attack a real company problem. The people who serve on an action learning team should meet two criteria. First, the individual should have some knowledge that will contribute to solving the business problem. And second, the individual should have some need of development. For example, maybe the worker needs more awareness of how other departments go about their work. You know, in today's organizations, you're hired into one silo and often you move up that silo, but you may have limited opportunities to work with people in other silos. And that limits your development because when you get to the top of the organization chart, you should be capable of functioning as a general manager with the ability to uh, work with all the silos in the organization. And that requires some awareness of what all those silos do and how they do it. So let me share with you a 10 step model of accelerated action learning. And we, we say accelerated because one of the pushbacks, the sources of resistance that talent developers will face if they propose using this approach in an organization is that managers will say, well, it'll take too long. It doesn't have to. It's all a question of what is the problem to be solved? What is the goal or vision to be, to be addressed? And what kind of development needs exist for the people on the team. So the first step is to select the real business problem, training challenge, organizational vision, or business goal to be achieved. In step two, we form a small group of people, about seven is optimal, who meet the dual criteria they have something to offer to solve the problem. And number two, they share some kind of development need. Maybe they need cross-functional exposure. Maybe they need cross-cultural exposure. And maybe this team is a way to meet that need. And step three, someone briefs the team members on the issue in step one. What is the problem we're trying to solve? What is the challenge we're trying to meet? And then we also provide some limitations. We don't want this project going on forever. So we provide sunset information. When will it end? What are the criteria for ending it? What kind of budget do you have? team to attack the problem? What kind of resources can you draw on? For example, can the team hire consulting assistants to help them address the problem they face? In step four, we establish the measurable goals for this action 
learning set. So we want to be clear about the who, what, when, where, why, how, how much. In step five, we encourage the team members to experiment. And that word experiment is an operative word. It means try out new ways of solving the problem, realizing the vision, meeting the challenge, or achieving the goal. Whatever the task or purpose of the team is, in step five, they should experiment with ways to address the problem. In step six, we make sure to emphasize both individual development as well as uh, business results. So we don't want a lopsided situation where the company is totally interested in business results and completely ignores the goal of developing each team member to meet whatever development needs they have going into that particular action learning project. Then in step seven, they complete the action learning project, what we call an action learning set. At that point, they're debriefed individually and collectively about what they learned from the experiment. Did they uh, solve the problem? Did they erode or chip away at the problem? And what kind of needs did they meet from their experience on the action learning team? And what kind of new needs for development emerged from their experience? So we debrief them. And then finally, we may choose to reassign those accelerated action learning team members to new teams in order to continue the meeting the dual goals of achieving business results and developing individual workers. So what's the point here? Why would we use this approach? Well, we know that classroom training is often a problem in terms of transfer of learning. If you send someone to a training program, often they only apply about 8% of what they've learned in the classroom training or the online learning experience back on the job in changed behavior. This approach of accelerated action learning has a much higher transfer rate because they're actually seeking business results and they can, their work is highly visible. No one wants to be embarrassed in front of their boss, their peers, and other senior people. And so people on an action learning team are going to work hard to get good results. And we will typically appoint two people on the team to serve as leaders. One of those is a team leader to make sure the project goals are achieved, the business needs are met. The other person is the team facilitator. That person focuses on making sure that the individual's development needs are being met through the project. And when we use micro learning methods, very short packets of information, or very short uh, learning experiences, and we combine that with action learning, we end up with accelerated action learning. So I hope you will learn more about this exciting new approach to employee development. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And also check out my book, Accelerated Action Learning. Thank you very much for listening to me.